Uh, let's talk about the, the biggest bank uh, uh, in the private bank space, of course. Uh, Abhishek, HDFC Bank? Well, Anuj, it is a strong set of numbers coming in from SDFC Bank. So there is improvement in yields, which is leading to higher NII growth. And the strong, uh, strong top-line growth along with operating efficiency has led to one of the strongest uh, operating profit growth in last four quarters. Slight hiccup in asset quality because slippages have increased to uh, 4,000 crore versus 3,300 odd crores in the previous quarter. Management in the Concord were cautious about the agri uh, portfolio, uh, becoming uh, seeing some NPA in June quarter and slow down in two-wheeler and four-wheeler segment, while they are also selectively and cautious about the NBFC and HFC space. CLSA has raised the target price by rupees 60 to 2730 per share. Back to you. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Vipro's numbers also came out post-market as Reema is here to give us the fine print. Reema? So well, to summarize, revenues in line, margins beat, but the Q4 guidance was muted. So on the top line, the companies delivered a 2.4% constant currency revenue growth. Margins have expanded by 180 basis points, sequentially much higher than expectations to come in at 19.8%, and that was the big beat. In fact, from Q1 to Q3, that's in a span of three quarters, the company's margins have improved from 16% to down nearly 20%. The miss has actually come in uh, on the guidance, where for Q4, they're expecting a 0 to 2% growth, baking in some demand fulfillment challenges in account of supply issues in developed markets, as well as possibility of external uncertainties and uncertain macros. Um, so net-net, um, Q4, um, it's a good quarter, especially the beat of the margins, but the guidance is muted. City has a sell call, but they've upped the target price to 325. Jefferies too has raised the target price to 290. But remember, the stock has seen a fairly good up move in the last few days. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that, Reema. So, a uh, mixed quarter, but uh, there are some positives. Ekta, uh, Sun Pharma again, is there any, uh, you know, backlash? Well, uh, it seems as though maybe the pressure could probably continue on Sun Pharma, Lata. So I'll just put out a couple of stats which uh, took place on Friday. For example, the stock was at a fresh 52-week low on Friday. The average volumes were, for example, six times on Friday. So around 8.3 crore shares traded and around 934 crore shares which were marked for delivery on Friday. So you can see the kind of trepidation which continues. And uh, as per my sources, there have been some funds which have completely sold their position in Sun Pharma as well. Now, Nomura has written on Sun and they've said that investor concerns are likely to linger in the near term till increased clarity is provided by the company and regulators on issues raised in the media. So maybe there could be some amount of uh, continued pressure on that stock. Oh, yes, it, it looked like that. And you know what? <laughs> on thurs Thursday's last 15 minutes, Friday's first 15 minutes, uh, that was enough to you know, undo a one month or more than that uh, kind of move that we had seen on the stock from 380 all the way up to 460, that was done in right a matter down. of 15, 20 minutes. But uh, there's another important issue. Uh, uh, SEBI has asked l &T to perhaps not go ahead with the buyback, and that's because of the debt equity uh, concerns. Anisha? Oh, well, yes, Anuj, as you mentioned, there might be a sentiment downtick on the stock today because SEBI believes that after the buyback, the debt equity will be over 2 is to 1, which is not in adherence with the buyback rules. Hence, they've advised the company not to go ahead with the buyback. Remember, they had announced this 9,000 crore buyback back in October at a price of 14.75, and that's the reason perhaps partly why the stock went from the levels of 1,200 to 14.50. In the last two, three weeks, we have heard a lot of murmurs regarding impatience in the investors as to why this buyback buyback was not really happening and now we know the reason why. What do brokerages say? CLSA believes that this will not impact the company's ROE expansion plan as well as there can be a one-time dividend of around 50 to 60 rupees that can the company do in lieu of this buyback. Overall, there's uh, numbers also expected this week. This Friday, the company reports numbers wherein a part of street believes that the company might go ahead and cut the order info guidance. So there are a few factors that are working on the negative side for LNT, but the long term remains positive, and that's why the stock might see some buying at the lower levels. Okay, that's interesting. And you know what's uh, the very proactive, Sebi? I would no, no, but there's a technical Sebi. issue here. Uh, they're talking about the consolidated debt equity, okay. and in that, a large part of debt is because of LNT finance. LNT Finance is, of course, oh. an NBFC, and you know, it's a bread That's, and butter, yeah, right? You so, <laughs> it's a bit of a technical issue here, oh, but okay, uh, you know, okay. of course, you're playing by the book and saying that this, look, this is consolidated debt equity, and you can't go ahead with the buyback. Uh, you could argue that uh, you know, if you remove LNT Finance, which is really an NBFC, and for that, you know, really debt is, uh, I mean, mm, what an yeah. NBFC would do, but that, that's how it is, so no buyback. All okay. right. Uh, well, I also want to point out Walk Hard. It received a USFDA approval for a leukemia drug, 
and the product, uh, Gleevec Generic, has sales of uh, more than $700 million in the U.S. And Walkhard has come out with a statement saying they're looking to build their portfolio of oncology products in the U.S. So uh, this is a sentiment positive for Walkhard. But let's talk about South Indian Bank. How did the numbers look, Abhishek? Well, Sonia, the numbers are not good. The slippages were at 659 crore, and that compares to about 213 crore in the previous quarter. The bank has recognized ILNFS as an NPA, and due to which, you know, there was an incremental slippage of 400 crores. Despite that, the slippages have risen quarter on quarter. So, gross NPA and absolute value has increased by 11% sequentially, while as a ratio, it is at 4.88 versus 4.6. Uh, the loan growth for the first time has fallen below 15% in last four quarters. The NII was up just two percent while profit was down 27 percent so red on the stock today okay uh, thanks a lot for that uh, well i might just worry a little bit about the nbfc stocks the entire sector uh, one because of what i already told you the reserve bank governor saying that uh, he's not quite convinced that uh, inflation is as benign as was his earlier statement but more important particularly he said rbi intends to strengthen the asset liability framework for nbfcs and harmonize it across categories mm -hmm. so both these could be a sentiment negative for nbfc the rbi had said as early as september uh, you know when the debt uh, issue first came. Uh, the following press conference itself, the RBI had clarified that they should write new rules. So it's not that the governor is saying something new, but uh, there was a certain certainty about uh, the way the governor put it uh, on Friday. And therefore, it looks like it's round the corner rather than something that RBI has in its mind for a, for a, you know, a medium term. Now it looks like it's round the corner and therefore there could be some sentiment negative. All right. Uh, what about ICICI, Lombard, and SBI Life? They come out, came out with their numbers as well post market hours. Abhishek, how did it look? Well, Sonia, the premium growth for ICICI, Lombard continued to remain healthy at 20.6%. However, the profit growth in lower single digit is a cause of worry given the fact that they had higher OPEX and upfront of acquisition fees. However, the key ratios like operating efficiency, which is measured in terms of combined ratio, remain steady, and the retention ratio improved to 69% versus 65% on a sequential basis. The SBI life, the new business premium growth remains steady and that led to new business margin actually remaining steady quarter on quarter at 17.5%. Persistency ratio has improved. The 13 month is at 83.3 versus 81% YOY and the capital uh, ratio, which is solvency ratio, also improved YOY to about 223%. Back to you. Okay, Abhishek, thanks a lot uh, for that. Uh, well, uh, let's talk about some other stocks and news, Anisha. Oh, well, yes, I'll start with NTPC because the investors might cheer the fact that there's a board meet on 30th which will not only consider the Q3 results but also a bonus issue. So that might keep the stock in green today. Moving on to Moil, which has signed an MOU with GMDC. Uh, and as a result, they'll be making an investment of 250 crores in a facility. And they're expecting that the production will start in 2019 itself. So positive news there. Moving on to Vodafone Idea, wherein the board is going to consider fundraising options in, uh, in the board board meet which is expected to happen on 23rd January which is this Friday. This is not completely fresh news because in November itself the company had indicated that they're looking to raise 25,000 odd crores but just the date has come out. Lastly keep an eye out on Wellspun Enterprises because NHI has given the appointed date for a project worth around 1000 crores. This means they have achieved all the financial closures etc. So a bit of sentiment boost. Back to you. All right, let's take, do a quick recap of our top stocks to focus on. Stocks with positive news flow, HDFC Bank, Wipro, IGL, Apollo Hospitals, SBI Life, NTPC, MOIL, Vodafone and Wellspin Enterprises. While stocks with negative news flow, of course, the big loser, Sun Pharma, ICICI Lombard, LNT, South Indian Bank, DCB Bank, Magma Fincorp, Repco Home Finance, DHFL and India Bulls Housing. Right, let's take a quick break on that note. But coming up, plenty of technical tips lined up. Ashwini Gujral, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar will be with us.